guys. I've spoken to a few of you out there. I'm Noelle. Uh, I'm the Google Workspace trainer. So Finn has asked me to come along and talk to you guys a little bit about getting return on investment from your Google Workspace. Um, we've been steadily getting faster, so I'm just going to say, please train your users. users. Bye. Um, <laughs> but actually, someone a little bit more eloquent than me, another Irish person, um, said, education is not filling a pail, it's lighting a fire. And what I would say to you today, and there's more detail to it, but if you cannot light a fire in your users, you're not going to get that return on investment on the whole of the Google Workspace environment, OK? Now, before I became a Google trainer, I actually was... Um, a student of management. And this chap, Ken Blanchard, was one of my favourite people. And Ken Blanchard, I don't know if anybody's familiar with him in the room, he's written about 60 books. He's, of course, an American motivational speaker. He's spoken to leadership in many uh, different industries uh, across the world. And when he was asked if you had to boil down what you have talked about over the last number of years to say, how do you lead or how do you get the best out of your people? He said, hire smart people, train them properly, and get out of their way. And I really like this maxim. I still like it. Um, it's one of those ones that you think, I could have thought of that, but I didn't think of that. So well done, Ken Blanchard, for thinking of that. However, I do think that this maxim has one little problem with it, because right here in the middle, with train them properly, he's not very specific. And I don't really necessarily know what train them properly means, OK? And for me, as a Google Workspace trainer, or a trainer in general, um, the training them piece is really crucial and understanding how to do that properly is going to make the difference between me standing at the top of a room and lecturing people and people actually taking that information and putting it into functional work. So LinkedIn Learning, I loved a LinkedIn Learning report uh, last year or at the start of this year in 2023, LinkedIn Learning surveyed a number of employers and they discovered that 93% of organisations were concerned about employee retention. Blanchard himself actually employed a number, uh, uh, went across a number of different empl uh, employers and in his HR and L&D trends, he found that 79% of the people that he had surveyed thought that 2013 was going to be extra hard to retain those people. Um, so when we come back to that maxim of hiring smart people and training them properly and then getting out of their way and letting them do their work, there's a little bit of a disconnect because they're, we're getting out of their way and then they're leaving. So we're doing something wrong somewhere, and I would say it's somewhere around here. Okay. So LinkedIn Learning also then asked um, all of the managers that they spoke to, what are your top three training topics going into 2023? Number one was, and I'm not going to give a prize because I bet everybody knows this, leadership skills. We always want to learn leadership skills. But number two, really importantly, was digital upscaling. And number three, supporting career development. And I would put it to you that in this age where we're all becoming digital, and that goes all the way down, as the lads were saying from AppSheet, to the factory floor up to the executive level, we're all digitally involved now. And so if we don't do this, we're not going to be able to achieve that. OK? So digital upskilling. For any trainers in the room, you might know digital upskilling is not without its, um, without its challenges and its problems. And we'll look at this both globally and from a uh, Google Workspace uh, point of view. The first challenge that you're going to discover when you're trying to digitally upskill is that technical training is harder than soft skills training. I reached out to my peer group and I said, is this a fair statement to make? And a number of people came back to me and said, yes, technical training is actually harder than soft skills training. If you deliver soft skills training or anybody in this room could fall asleep for five minutes, wait back up again, pick up the gist and we'll keep moving. If you're training technically and you miss out a step in that technical training, there's no point in you following on the rest of the training. So it's very, very... Um, mentally difficult to to sit in technical training and to deliver that technical training so and you need resources and you very much need time secondly our workloads are heavier than ever i think workloads were always very difficult to get a little training um get a little training insertion into uh, i know before covid it would take me a lot of time to get managers to give me their people either if they were being onboarded in the middle of their journey or even if they were going for promotion where training makes the most sense. To get that time resource was really, really difficult. 
Now, post-COVID, where we do have a hybrid world and everybody's at home going, I have to appear productive, nobody wants to waste two or three hours on training because it doesn't show anything at the end that we can tangibly touch or point to. So workloads are getting heavier than ever. Uh, Google Workspace functionality, and this is good for us, but it's also a problem. It's constantly evolving, so there's always something new. Previously, I worked for a multinational recruitment company, and we kind of gave up trying to keep on top of content for, for training for Google Workspace because we were trying to train on everything else, and we just couldn't keep on top of it because there's so much coming through, which is good. And then Google Workspace is too intuitive. Uh, the perception I find in a lot of companies is they go, it's really easy. I'm sure all the kids are digital natives now, and why would I need to show them how to use Google Workspace? Except for Sheets. Sheets are really scary. We want a lot of training on Sheets. Um, so Google Workspace being so intuitive means that people look to peer-to-peer -peer training, or they'll just know when they come in, or Mary will train Bob and Bob will train Elizabeth. And the last one, and Finton recognised this as well, is your users don't know what they don't know. And we get into a chicken and egg situation where they can't ask you for training on functionality that they don't know, and you're not going to put functionality in front of them that they're not interested in learning. So we end up in this big cycle. So with all these challenges to our digital upselling, let's have a little look and we'll give you some tips on how you can address each of these challenges. And because it's an event, I'm going to tell you how we can help you address these challenges as well. So with technical training being harder, harder, this one I can't stress enough, and it's not just because I'm a technical trainer, I've been a soft skills trainer before, use an experienced technical trainer. Okay, peer-to-peer -peer training is awesome if you have a really tight budget or if you put a lot of support and resources around that. But what happens is that you train back bad habits and you miss functionality because I will train yourself on functionality that I use in my role, but that might be different to what you're using in your role. Okay, so watch out for the peer-to-peer -peer training. Anybody using admins to train users? Please don't use admins to train users. They're only four steps ahead of the user, and therefore, and they're not skilled trainers, so they don't know how to take that back, break down the use case, and deliver that back out again. So really think about using an experienced technical trainer or upskill a soft trainer, soft skills trainer to technical training. Keep your sessions short. We talked about the mental capacity that people have. Technical training is really deep, it's very intensive. So keep your sessions focused and short. We talk a lot in training, I don't know how many trainers we have in the room, but we talk about different learning styles. I'm sure everybody's done one of those Honey and Munford learning styles things before. Some people like to touch stuff, some people like to think about stuff, some people like to hear stuff. This doubles up when it's technical training because people have a very different way of learning technically than how they learn when they're learning soft skills. So you need to be ready for that and you need to provide that information in a variety of different ways. And then this one I cannot underline enough, give practical use cases and allow your users to practice. And we talked about that with AppSheet where log in, play with it, get to know it. And we talk a lot in our training sessions about playing along at home, which is really important. So how can we help you? Hi, I have 15 years of experience in Google Workspace and I have seven years experience as a technical trainer. Um, come and have a chat with us. Let us come in, have a look at your business, have a look at your challenges, see what we can help you with. Um, we will deliver content in your way, customised to your industry and have a listen to the challenges that you're coming across and then deliver based on that instead of just giving you off the shelf basic training. And lastly, we don't train any topics for any longer than two to three hours. I still don't think I've delivered a three hour training session. And we make those stackable. So we might start in the morning and we might go, let's talk about communication. And then we might come back after a break and we might talk about collaboration. And then later on in the afternoon, when everybody's had a bit of lunch and they're ready to take it on, we might do two hours of sheets. So we can do those stackable sessions. So you can still offer a day of training if you want to, but we'll deliver it in two hour sessions. So workloads are heavier. Uh, again, this comes back to your use cases, folks. Deliver relevant content to the right people. Irrelevant content is going to hurt your training session because that person who is not using that piece of functionality will turn off and shut down. This one's a really big one. Provide learning resources that can be learning in the moment or point of need learning, it's also called for anybody who recognises that. 
these are resources that I, whenever I want to build a timeline, can say, oh yeah, I have that. I have that little cheat sheet that's about timelines. Let's go and have a look at that. Let me follow the instructions. Let me learn in the moment while I'm using it. If I was trained at six months ago, there's so much happening in Google Workspace. And in our own day times, we might not remember what we learned. This leads on to bite-sized learning. Think about different ways to deliver. Deliver it in a video, deliver it in a cheat sheet, put a poster up for a week while people learn that little piece of information. And remember that not all people are going to learn the same way. So one size does not fit all. So we have a few solutions that I personally like. Um, one of those is that we have our Google Workspace User Academy. This is a site that has 16 videos on it. Each video is approximately seven minutes in length. And what it gives you is a baseline education on Google Workspace. So you can have somebody come in from day one. You could have a returner from Matt or a paternity leave who can come back and refresh by accessing this website. We also have a great service uh, called Tip of the Week. Our tip of the week is a weekly email that you can subscribe your users to. And the email takes approximately two minutes to read. That's pretty bite-sized. It takes one minute to apply that tip of the week. And we've delivered some tips of the week that we've been told have changed the way some of our, our recipients thought about their inboxes and the way in which they work. Google Workspace is constantly evolving. Because it's constantly evolving, I would urge you to constantly push out information on it. Um, and that does sometimes sit with your IT team. Something new here, guys does, it, guys, does everybody know about it? Make sure that your managers are on board with it. Make sure it's trickling all the way down to your users. Education, uh, when you're doing that, educate your users on the five Ws. Who, what, where, why, and when. How are they supposed to use this? How does it fit into their life? Who can they use it with? What can they do with it? Position new functionality within the existing environment. So we will discover, for, for those of you who are more in the, the IT side of things, and I'm looking at the RVU group here, um, you'll realize that some functionality that comes on stream can contradict other functionality that's happening around the Google Workspace. So if you're going to educate on new functionality, ensure that you're telling your users where that contradiction lies or where one application may affect another. And then lastly, and this is what I wanted, and that's why we came up with a lot of this, is because when I worked somewhere else, make it someone else's problem. I'm already doing this, guys. I can do it for everybody else in the room. So again, we have our User Workspace Academy. It's curated content. It is updated quarterly, or we update all of that content whenever we have a user interface change or a big massive piece of functionality that comes on stream. Um, and this, for you guys, is low touch. You manage a subscription list and we do the rest. The tip of the week service, this unlocks existing functionality that's already out there that everybody's forgotten about, and it advises on this new functionality that's coming out. It provides use cases for your users, so we'll say Sandra in marketing can use this feature this way, and Bob over in admin can use this feature in this way. And lastly, it outlines feature watch points. So those areas in which if you do this, you might expose information. If you do that, it might contradict something else you have somewhere else. For Google Workspace being intuitive, I strongly urge you to make a case in your company against peer-to-peer -peer learning in that lazy way where we just get someone else to train on, uh, on technical pieces of work. In the digital age, our work is all about the applications that we use, and it deserves the respect of having proper training. Theme your trainings to goals and roles. We train to collaboration and communication and to productivity and to project management. And we also train to like executive assistant roles, to project management roles, to business analysis roles. Invest in and inter incentivize internal influencers. So if you have people in your business who are already interacting really well and they have become the point of contact for training for Google Workspace, give them resources, give them incentives to push that information out across your business. And support your help desk and any of those influencers with those shareable resources. Um, and we have a number of shareable resources. We, like I said, we have our tip of the week. We have our, um, we have, this is a, one of the cheat sheets that we send out as well. So talk to us if you need resources, we can absolutely support you with that. And lastly, and I'm nearly there, I promise, it's been a lot of information today. Uh, your users don't know what they don't know. So audit the functionality of your users. Find out what they are using and how are they using it. And more importantly, what they're not using and how they're not using it. 
Engage your, your users in hearts and minds conversations. So there may be some of you out there who are looking to consolidate into Google Workspace and drop off all those other SaaS products that are costing you money or that are making you exposed. If you don't have the conversations with your users about hearts and minds stuff, Sarah's not using uh, anything other than Slack because she understands Slack and she's really afraid to move to Google Chat because she used it 10 years ago and it was rubbish and now it's actually much better and it's much more usable. So have those conversations. Um, and then look for trends across the departments, trends in usage and patterns across the business that can help you find ways to deliver that information across. And more importantly than anything, if you ask these questions, take some action and do something. There's nothing more frustrating as a user to be asked a lot of questions about how you use something and how you feel about something. And then they go, that's delightful. Thank you very much. They pack it up and nobody touches it again. So make sure you're doing something. Now we actually, provide what's called a learning needs analysis. So we would, can come into your business and this is very much, you can let us just do it or you can get really get your hands dirty and talk to us and we can build something really heavily customized. We brand it, this is uh, Danton Cloud branding, but we brand these surveys to you. It looks like it comes from you. And I know for anybody who's in an IT role here, it always feels like you're the one going, you didn't change your password. Somebody exposed this document. You're constantly having what feels like really negative conversations. This is a super positive conversation to have with the rest of your business, particularly if you take actions on it, make changes and react to what people say. Um, so I'm gonna return back to uh, what Blanchard said at the start, and this time it's going to be me. So um, I would say, yes, please, hire smart people, get those people in your business, understand what they need to know, create space for continual and constant learning, deliver content in digestible and varied formats, and make the correct resources available, and then get out of their way and let them get on with their job. And that's me.